Now, the mood among Europe's political leaders this weekend can safely be said to echo the sentiments of that famous old political quotation. The people have spoken, the bastards. And with Ireland having spoken so clearly, the question for presidents and prime ministers preparing for a summit in Brussels this week is what to do next. Do they carry on ratifying the existing treaty like Britain? Or exit and start again. After all, we've been down this route before. Plan A was the Constitution. Well, the Dutch and French saw that off. Plan B was the Treaty. No thanks, said the Irish. So with alarming alphabetical speed, we're on to Plan C. Or is there a Plan C? Well, you may recall this from a report we carried on the programme a fortnight ago. The failed Constitution was Plan A, that the Lisbon Treaty is Plan B, and that there is no Plan C. Uh, it couldn't be clearer than that. There is no uh, secret document in a bottom drawer anywhere in, in Europe uh, to deal with uh, a situation where the treaty is not ratified. Don't say we didn't warn you. And in the absence of a plan C, both wings of the European debate have been keen to come up with their own solutions to what the French president, Nicolas Sarkozy, referred to yesterday as the Irish incident. The premier element, we continue to ratify. Our first view is that we keep going on with the ratification. But on the other hand, we still have to keep thinking and work together. It's not by accident. It's not a surprise. Yesterday, I had a chat with the Irish Prime Minister. Many people in Europe do not understand the way we build Europe today. We have to take that on board, and very quickly. And we have to change our ways of building up Europe. The European idea is the greatest of all. This is what the founding fathers of Europe did half a century ago. The third reading of this, of this European treaty that is due to go through the House of Lords next week should be stopped immediately. You know, I mean, I mean you know, I'd love a referendum on it, but, but just for now, Gordon Brown, please stop the ratification of this project. That's what I want to see. But I suspect what's going to happen is just the same as happened two years ago when the French and Dutch voted no. I don't think these people behind the European Union understand what the word no means. They're going to push on in their arrogant way and they're going to say, I'm sorry, we don't care what you think. We, we actually now hold democracy in contempt and we're going to push on with our plans. So, just an awkward speed bump or the end of the road for the treaty? Our Europe editor, Mark Mardell, surve surveys the damage from Brussels. To some, joy to be alive that day. To others, a crushing crisis. But was it a shock to Europe's political elite? No, not really. Just what they've long feared. After all, the people of Europe have form as long as your arm. Remember, the Danes said no to the Maastricht Treaty and earned a few opt-outs. The Irish said no to Nice and got a clarification. The French and Dutch said no to the European Constitution and got the Lisbon Treaty instead. That's the one signed by everybody, well, everybody except Gordon Brown, in the Portuguese capital last December. You know, the one where Article 1A says it's founded on the values of human dignity, freedom and democracy. Ah, democracy. Tricky one, that. Of course, some, like the unlikely couple of the French president and the German chancellor, feel it's not very democratic for one country to stop all the others going ahead with the project. So what might they do? First, call poor Biffo to account. The Irish Prime Minister Brian Cowan has been told to explain himself to the crisis summit on the principle, you broke it, you fix it. He could argue for a wheeze to allow Ireland to vote again, like keeping this man. Charlie McCreevy is Ireland's commissioner. At the moment, all countries have one. Under Lisbon, all countries would have one for only 10 years out of every 15. If the Irish killed off the slimming down of the commission, they could justifiably claim things had changed. In preparation for this, or indeed anything else, parliaments around Europe will be asked to back the treaty. And following ratification of the Treaty of Lisbon. The Lords will vote in the next few days. It's on the general principle that you might as well be in a position to go for it if something happens. No campaigners can celebrate, the people have spoken, but don't forget, it's the politicians who will decide.